Systematic reviews are used to locate, appraise, and evaluate evidence. They may or may not include what's called a meta-analysis. A meta-analysis is used to combine the statistical results of studies to come up with an overall conclusion, and it doesn't always make sense to do one. For instance, if a systematic review includes different kinds of studies, such as including randomized control trials or RCTs and cohort studies, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Or if maybe the studies are looking at different populations, like one group is looking at adults and one group is looking at children, again, it doesn't make as much sense to combine those populations. So in that case, a meta-analysis probably wouldn't be appropriate. Systematic reviews are used to examine all the relevant evidence that's out there, evaluate evidence that's conflicting, determine best practices, and identify research gaps. They're used by clinicians, researchers, and educators to make decisions that are based on the best evidence. A good research question needs to be well formulated, and focused, and relevant. The components of the research question need to include five components, which are in the acronym PICOS. The P stands for patient, or the population, or the problem. I stands for the intervention that's being evaluated. C stands for the comparators or the control to which the intervention is being compared. O is the outcome and S is the study design. For example, some systematic reviews may focus on a specific study design, such as only looking at randomized control trials or only looking at cohort studies. Your research question really is going to drive how you look for the data. A good protocol needs to include a search strategy. The search strategy includes the inclusion and exclusion criteria that will be used to evaluate which studies will be included in the review. The data sources that will be used include electronic sources like Medline or Embase or Scopus, hand searching of journals, as well as the reference lists of key articles in existing literature reviews. As well, the protocol needs to include a data abstraction instrument. This is typically a table that will be used to extract the relevant data from the studies. It's very important to reduce bias, and systematic reviews can do this well. The reason we need to reduce bias is, if there's bias, you could end up with results that are misleading or plain wrong. Bias is reduced by assessing the quality of the studies, by using multiple reviewers, and it can also be reduced by using randomized control trials and only focusing on that group, that kind of study. An issue is, though, that only about 10% of healthcare studies actually use randomized control trials, so this might not actually be a realistic thing to always look for. There's two commonly used protocols to evaluate literature reviews. These are AMSTAR, which is the assessment of multiple systematic reviews, and PRISMA, which stands for Preferred Reporting Indicators for Systematic Reviews and Meta-Analyses. The benefits of doing a systematic review. There are several key assessment criteria for systematic review. The rationale needs to be clear. The research question must be clearly formulated and must include the components that we've outlined. There must be a clearly described search strategy and attention must be paid to bias. For instance, the protocol can detail how multiple reviewers will evaluate the studies. For a handout that accompanies this presentation, please see the website www.hsprn.ca which also includes our library of research methods, handouts, and videos.